welcome back to another video. I realized that I haven't done the switchless kernel switcher for the short board. And uh, I think maybe I should do that because now I hear people have some problems. First, I will have some breakfast. Yeah, so anyway, these are the parts we have that I've built from before. So kept everything in a box. So this uh, on the sides here are the shortboard version and all of these big ones are longboard versions. We are having the soda iron. And you can notice something, there's no beeper anymore. So I was so annoyed by this beep tone. So sometimes I solder at night while Ingrid is sleeping. <laughs> and uh, what I did was I took out the beeper speaker and uh, put it onto this board. I don't know if I've uh, ever featured this board. So it has a AM Suka. It's a board made by Jasper Sikin. He makes a lot of cool stuff with energy harvesting boards. So it has an energy harvesting chip. Uh, it, it charges into super capacitors. These are two 2.7 volt, 2.8 microfarads. And I have connected an ATtiny 412. I don't think I ever featured a video about this. I think I made the video, but I never released it. So I went from ATtiny 85 because I was thinking that was good enough. But I could only get it down to about one microamp or something. Thing here is not an AVR, it's more modern tiny AVR. And this one can really sleep. So, <laughs> so, so basically it sleeps for like 10 seconds or something. And then it turns on, flashes this one and uh, reads it back and see if the fridge door is open. Yeah. And I have a solar panel for it. So it's pretty cool. So it just takes lights from the window and then it works. But uh, in winter time, I forgot that uh, the sun <laughs> Here in Norway, we don't have so much sun in winter time, so didn't work so well in winter. But let's get on with it. Let me try something new here. This is the new phone I have, the OnePlus 8. It has a wide screen or the wide recording lens. So let's just get out some components and um, uh, try it out because I want to start with the SMD parts first. Let's just inspect it, see if it's okay. I'm actually using the camera here to see. <laughs> so, but yeah, that looks okay. I should reflow the last pin up here. Okay, so there have been a couple of forum posts and issues on GitHub 
right here on my project page for this project. And this is one of the reasons why I'm building this board right now is that I need to test it myself because people are saying that I'm having trouble with it. Another guy says that has trouble with it with the Easy Flash 3 and Kung Fu Flash cartridge. So, and basically in every case to now I think it has been sold by removing XROOM. And the same thing in this uh, recent issue here at the bottom. Uh, you also had some similar issue but with the Kung Fu Flash among other cartridges. And I see it also has DF here, which is the same for this picture here, which it says DF when resist disable is not activated. So that means if you get an X room there, if you have connected X room, the cartridge issues an X room, then uh, microcontroller reset the IO on that microcontroller on the switcher will change. And um, if the computer is running from the kernel, it will crash. So, <laughs> but the, the common mistake I think here that people are making is that when you use MiniPro in particular, it says reset disable equals zero. So it's like, it's double negative. So that's the reason why I was very meticulous. <laughs> is that the correct word? Uh, when I wrote the user guide and not talk about directly um, down here. I say make sure that the fuse low byte, high byte or 62 DF if reset is enabled and 62 5F is disabled. So I, I don't talk about what you're going to click here. I just say that these fuse bits must be what it says here. So you have to just click whatever you need to click to get it to the correct place. So, mm. I think there might be a really much more easier explanation why people make this mistake because in the user guide I have this picture and uh, in this picture I haven't checked this uh, reset disable because sometimes you don't want that checked but in the text below it says 5f and then it's supposed to be checked though so but yeah then they are not reading the text so <laughs> I can't really what sh what should I do I mean uh, people have to read the text right Okay, so I'm gonna solder up this board with the sockets and uh, pins that goes into the board, C64 socket, and then the MCU. And what is the order of soldering? Because when you solder something here and you want the socket on top, then um, you can't reach all the solder points anymore. So we have to do it in the correct order. So this is from the user guide. I hope it will be the same for this board, and I think it will because it's, uh, well here you can see the long board version. It's a bit different on the underside, so, but it's the same connector sort of, it's just a different amount of pins though that goes into the computer as you can see. Well here you have uh, as much rows on both sides. So what do you think? <laughs> So well, I just have to inspect this. I think this uh, looks good now. Let's see if it's straight. It looks straight. Yeah. Oh, it turns into a big mess when I do this. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to use Brutec. So, but I will get it up. Just stick it up like this. And get it off. It's still quite hot, so that might be the issue here. No problemo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no problems. So there you go. One solder. Oh, there's a missing solder in a pin there. Okay, so that 
took a bit of while. So I will just finish up the board and then we will try to prepare the C64C, which is uh, basically buried up there. It's a white machine. It's a beauty. So I haven't touched it. It's, uh, I've been contemplating on not doing it, but um, anyway, we'll just skip to that and um, uh, we'll finish here off camera. So we, the video doesn't get so long. Look at this, it's immaculate, oh, C64G actually, okay it's a bit yellow on the underside, I didn't know that, but I actually did a retro bright on this, and um, actually I don't think it needed it. I wonder how uh, dust gets into this, because it has been closed for all this time. So, but you can see the um, styrofoam is going into pieces, so. Alright, so let's get it open so we can get out the uh, motherboard. Just gonna get some... I put all these screwdrivers at uh, my new home, so... Oh yeah, I don't have the... Oh, that's gonna be a problem actually. <laughs> I don't have a proper screwdriver. So here in here, as you can see, there's no modification to this board. So that's really nice. And uh, the previous owner had it in a box for like since 1990 or something. So I'm really lucky to have this board. I know there were like 10 others going to have this board, but... Uh, um, well, I told this story before, but uh, it's uh, many years ago, so... Basically, what it uh, boiled down to was that he was living a little bit outside Oslo. I live in Oslo, but he also had trouble walking. So for whoever could pick it up, could get it. So we offered to pick it up and then we got first in the queue. So yeah, so we picked it up and I um, was really lucky. I didn't pay much for it because Commodore 64 is a bit expensive for some reason, Amiga 500. It's uh, so inexpensive compared to this Commodore, so I have no idea why. I mean, Amiga 500, you have much more advanced games, so... <laughs> but maybe now, now with the Pi Storm, maybe that will change, who knows? So be interesting to see how that goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take out the um, room. I'm not sure which of them they are. I think maybe it's this one because what, what they have done here is to take the basic and the kernel into one room so that means 28 pins and then the um, character room is uh, the same as before so they haven't put that in there well, that's strange but maybe because it's an odd number like three <laughs> so it could be could be this time i'm not gonna lose any screws i want this uh, computer to be as complete as possible I, Great to have a kernel switcher anyway to get GIF with us and such. So, um, yeah, so now I think we can release it. 
Yeah. So there we go. So we'll just remove the computer door. Computer door. First, so you don't damage anything. Look at that. It looks so nice. So here we go. So basically, you have to desolder this. And uh, another thing I checked. Hold on. I'm just gonna focus. Another thing I checked here last time I opened it, I, I will link the video below. So I checked that there was any tampering or they had to change anything here. But no, nothing has been changed. Usually there's a change in the PLA or the CIA or something. So say, look, 8550 RFI. 1988 actually. Yes, most of the chips here are 88, as I can see. 88. Even the CIA, there's two of them, I think. Yeah, there's one over here also. There's like a, a solder iron going across here. Like this. So I desoldered this chip now, it's out, and let me tell you, it was really difficult, I had to get the hot air station out. And uh, you see, I try to protect stuff around here, I really, really like, don't like doing that, so, but, the um, thing is, with this uh, 250-469 board, it's really good. Uh, it has a really good ground fill, so that also makes it a bit more difficult, I think to desolder so yeah i'm glad i didn't show that because then my comment section will be on fire yes so just gonna get out a socket and uh put it in here i have to clean a little bit first so yeah i'm really happy about this i can't see anything broken here so that's good now uh, let's have to check this one another let's try zoom it in I don't know, actually, is it broken? Maybe I should just uh, get the light in the right angle. Maybe that's the problem here. Hold on. Ah, no, it's not broken. So, that's good. Good, so we'll just clean it up.
Okay, it's the wrong way. <laughs> it's just a socket. It's a double wipe. I can put all the part numbers in uh, from Mauser in the uh, description. So this is a nice socket. There's nothing wrong with it. And then, meaning it's not from eBay. <laughs> Because, well, I've used that before and they work great, but I, I think these uh, seem to be working even better. So, so yeah, we'll just stick it on momentarily and then just solder two pins. So I've been to the dentist, so excuse me if my voice is a bit weird. <laughs> but I have the C64G up here right now. And it's a bit hard with only one hand, but I've installed the current board. This apron I got from uh, Sven Peterson. And the reason why I used this because I think something might have been wrong with the one I was using yesterday, which was a wind bond uh, W27512. Well, they are the same size, but maybe they have different speeds. But I figured out that I had something wrong with this one. So I think um, <clears throat> the cathode was in the wrong place. So that means we had some overloading on the uh, 80 tiny so now i fixed that and it's uh, very stable so and then one problem people are reporting is that it doesn't cold boot actually so let me try to film this um, i'll put in the other chip because when i experienced problem with that one uh, it was Probably just this LED. So let's see if it cold boots. Okay, it didn't cold boot. So let's try. See if it uh, warm boots. No, so it doesn't boot at all this time. I think maybe something with the firmware because now it was all black so yeah there it goes so maybe something is wrong with the um, startup of this uh, chip actually so when I come to think of it so just hold restore it starts blinking then you can s uh, select other settings you see none of them are black that is something I notice right now <clears throat> It's not supposed to be black because if it's black, then it's select, selecting basic as kernel. <laughs> That's uh, really not going to work. See, there it goes. Yeah, so the first thing you do after you uh, program this, and you insert a chip and everything, it's uh, in the wrong mode. So what you need to do is to hold restore while we power it up to get into the menu so you keep holding it there you go so now it starts uh, to flash white so there's a short long short long short long that's because i've programmed it to short long so if you click it you get into another mode long short i think there's the long long yeah <laughs> long long but uh, the correct, uh, I will just put on the screen what's correct. So I clicked twice, I get back to the one I started with. 
and then you I think you have to hold it until it uh, goes to green yeah so now it should be in a mode with a bank seven banks and short board short board so now it's in seven kernel short board mode okay so um, but now it didn't start so and now this one was green already so yeah there it starts so something is up here so it doesn't like warm boots and boots booting from uh, power off to power on let's try this what is some flashing at the start maybe i can fix that maybe it's causing havoc or something Yeah, there it goes. So, yeah, so there's a couple of things that I've looked at actually. And um, so I looked up the data sheet for the 80 tiny chip. And uh, well, actually, I was Googling. So I found uh, someone saying that the 80 tiny 5 has like in the 8 megahertz internal oscillator mode, you have three startup times. And the default is 14 cycles plus 64 milliseconds. So I was wondering if that's maybe too long. I can actually change that by changing these bits, fuse bits, the uh, startup time bits. So That's it. So let's try this. Um, yeah, there you go. You can see it. The best lighting, but get this in there. There you go. <laughs> That's about it. Put it back into the computer. Don't think I can hold the camera at the same time right now. So, well, I can try. So, just ground myself, touching here. I don't have particularly much uh, ESD problems in this apartment actually but we have to be on the safe side especially when you lean up from the chair or uh, you walk across the floor then it's uh, important just difficult with one hand No, didn't flash started yes that's actually um improvements let's try some older <laughs> yeah look the red i think that's the original oh that's something else anyway there we go. turn it back on no flashing and it works i think maybe i found the mistake they will announce that on both the issues that I have and forum64.de be happy to find that okay now I have to get to work <laughs> okay thanks for watching by the way
just testing here with the uh, full flash actually and it seems to be okay so if I hit press uh, F7 go to basic now I can change the uh, the room here so have a look that goes fine so I click uh, menu here straight into menu you can load rocket smash there you go wow it's so fast <laughs> no problems whatsoever I can also do a reset so hold it and then release it should go to reset in a moment there you go there you go so that's working so I don't know what's um, wrong now I don't think there's anything more wrong Maybe we fixed it, but if I do a reset while it's in uh, menu mode, then I don't think it will work. We'll try. Okay. Yeah, so there is a problem. I think that's the interaction between uh, the cartridge and the reset the menu, but, but you can press menu and then you get uh, back to the menu. So, so I'm uh, happy with that. Um, Maybe something can be done in the firmware for the cartridge, I don't know. Maybe I can listen to reset or something. Okay. This is what happens if you press reset and then you press menu. 